Hey friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you like lip products, I think you're totally in the right place right now. I mean, I feel like I haven't done a real dedicated, sinking my teeth into a bunch of different lip products type video in a while. And I feel like lately a lot of new lip products are coming out. In this video, I also have just a new discovery for me. I'm not sure how new the product actually is, but it's a very different product that I've come across thanks to my sister's recommendation. And yeah, we've got hits and misses here. Not everything is a love as you're gonna see but you'll see them all tried on, so you'll definitely, I think, easily be able to make that decision for yourself as to whether you like them, because you'll see just exactly how they look on the lips. So the first thing I wanna talk about is L'Oreal's new collection, and what's sort of interesting about this is this is a celebrity collaboration with Camila Cabello, and the packaging is really gorgeous. There are some other products that have come out in this line as well. I've got some individual eyeshadows, and let me know if you're interested in hearing more about those or any of the other parts of the line. I think there may be a liquid highlight, um, eyeliner, I'm not positive on that. But when I did find the lip glosses on Ulta's website, I jumped on them. These are called Lip Dews, and sadly these are much more sheer than I was expecting. I was hoping they'd have a little more color, I was hoping they would differentiate themselves a bit from each other, because just seeing these colors just solidly here, I really like what I see, but the degree to which they sheer out on the lips makes them much less special. You know, I was hoping this pink would show up more like that pink, but they're very much one of those gel type glosses that is not infused with a whole lot of pigment. They sheer out a lot. As we go through the try on, you'll see the shade that really does pack a bit more of a punch, but all in all, I think it's a skippable line of lip gloss. The first one here called Lit Up, this is the only one that seems to have kind of a shimmer or metallic nature to it, although because it is a true gloss, it doesn't have like a metallic dry down on the lips. It still stays shiny, but it's got a little shimmer and it's very very, very sheer. I have worn this shade over a matte lipstick or, you know, a matte lip liner that's in the neutral color family, and that looks pretty enough, but it's not super impressive looking at all the other lip glosses on the market. It's not doing anything really unique and different. The most colorful one in the line is the one called, I think it's Denudo, and this is a real caramely shade, and I do think it's pretty on the lips. The texture of these glosses is kind of thick, yet still quite comfortable. What I struggle with a little is the fact that the doe foot applicator is so big and carries so much product, it's easy to over goop your lips and get too much put on. But if every color showed up as well as this shade, I think we'd have a little bit different story here with the lip dews. We've got a peachy shade here called Serendipity. It's very sheer. Again, if I saw more of the color on my lips, I think I'd like it better. I just don't think it's really worth my money to buy something like that in the specific shade and not see a lot of it on my lips. And the shade Camila, this light pink, I so wanted more out of this too. I'm just seeing so much of my natural lip color through it. And with these sheer glosses, that is going to really dictate your end effect, um, is how colorful your own natural lips are, because a lot of that's going to show through here. So for my love of lip gloss, I was excited for this launch of these products. I love when a brand puts out a new type of gloss. I was excited by the celebrity collaboration there, but it really fell short for me. It needs more color payoff. Here's the next thing I want to talk about, and this was a recommendation from my sister, and she had texted me one day and said, have you ever heard of this product called On me. Um, it's a boosting lip and cheek stick, and she said this is by far my favorite thing to wear on my lips, and she's like, I don't go crazy over different makeup products, but she told me how much she loved these. So I thought, if Pup's raving about it, I'm gonna try it. So I went to their website, and I decided that if I was gonna give these, you know, a good review, I would get the little set of all three shades that they put out in this lip and cheek thing, and it also came with a little brush. The other thing I ordered from the website is this great little hat that says Beauty Nerd on it. But what is this thing? It says hydrating balm plus collagen enhancing actives plus a hint of color. Well, I think there's quite a bit of color in these actually. These sticks are made in Korea and it says on the website, they're clinically proven to promote microcirculation, soften fine lines, and boost collagen production. And it says they're available in three shades, all named after brilliant women in history. And they are so beautiful on. They feel like a balm. There's a real thinness to them. They're not a stain. The one drawback on these is that I felt like after trying them, and the way they initially looked on the lips, I thought, ooh, are these gonna have that kind of neat staining effect? It's almost like you're putting Benefits Benetint on your lips, but instead of it being totally dry, there's all this nice moisture to it, but it's that kind of a look. But no, the staying power doesn't seem great on these, but they're not really a chore to reapply. I mean, they're very easy. They're very low maintenance, no fuss stick, but I also think they're gorgeous actually on the face. That's gonna kind of dictate the order in which I show you these. Nightingale Nude. I actually kind of like this caramely brownish shade. It's a bit of a con 
contour. So I swipe it a little lower on my cheek than I would put my blush and also around the hairline. And then there's this really nice, dense, retractable brush that they give you if you buy the set. And you can use that to easily buff it in. This stuff moves into the skin so easily. And I do think a brush is nice because it keeps you from applying all the pressure you might apply with your fingers. I'm not saying you have to have this exact brush, but something that resembles this in terms of the density and softness. Because when you're blending in a cream on your skin, you don't want to apply so much pressure that you're messing up and sort of moving around your foundations and concealers underneath. But on the lips, this looks kind of caramely and pretty. I do really like the look of that and the feel is so buttery smooth. The only downside is going to be that it doesn't last super well on the lips because of all that thinness. It's not a thick feeling balm. It's not even as thick feeling across the lips as like a Nivea lip balm. But the color is gorgeous and the lightness is so like natural. You're going to see with these next two shades on the lips. It's this natural kind of look almost as though the lips were naturally producing that shade, you know, from themselves. My favorite shade in the bunch, if I were to only end up with one, if I could only keep one, you know, I would go with Tamar Wine. And this shade is so glorious on the lips and cheeks. Something about it looks so natural. Maybe it's because it's a thin enough product where you do kind of see the texture of your lips, but in a good way through it. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't see dryness or flakiness or cracked or whatever. You get the sense that it's doing good things moisturization wise for your lips, but you're seeing your lips. If you're going to apply any of these as a blush, I suggest simply one dot and then blend it in with your buffing brush. It really doesn't take any more than that. It's a gorgeous shade. You won't feel sticky after words. And then this last shade, um, which I can't really show you accurately on the cheeks now that I've already put on the other shade as blush, but this is Cruise Berry. And this on the lips is going to have a little more pinky purpliness infused in it where the other one had more red in it. I think this is gorgeous too on the lips. I really do like it. But like I said, the wine shade might be my ultimate favorite if I had to just stay with one because I do love the look of it so much on both the cheeks and the lips. And my sister talked to me about how great this was on the lips, but I think I may have found my new favorite cream blush in this product too, because it is so radiant looking on the cheeks without being thick and sticky. Great product find. I'm so excited about that. Now I want to talk about the latest thing Besame has come out with. It's a very unique concept to their line. This brand, if you're not familiar, they do um, like replica shades of vintage lipstick colors. A lot of them are some of the great reds of history, like Marilyn Monroe's classic red from this certain year. You know, they pin it down. They They've found the shade and then they've recreated it in a modern formula. And so much of what they do is a really classic, full colored, very opaque, very pigmented lipstick. And so their new thing that they've come out with now in packaging that is just as gorgeous, if not even more gorgeous now. Oh, I love the maroon and the pink. And that's kind of why I'm wearing this maroon top today and then the light pink lip. Oh, it's called the Debutante Sheer Color Lipstick. So they've created this wonderful new formula that's so different from their norm, but it feels every bit as luxurious. And yes, I saved the box that it came in. So gorgeous. There are three shades. If you like a soft pink lip, hear me on this one because I think the pink is the best in this line. I really like all three of their shades. I truly do. But pink is really hard to nail. Sometimes pink looks too soft. Sometimes it looks too chalky. Sometimes a pink is so light that it makes the lips look dry. This I really feel is a perfect pink. And when you twist it up out of the tube, isn't this beautiful how they've kept the same formed stick? I love how it's a sheer formula, yet they kept all the luxurious qualities of their classic lipsticks in this. But they have a really balmy feel. They are so much thinner and more lightweight than the classic Besame lipsticks. But they're not sheer to the point of being like a do-nothing, like why did I even and choose the specific shade lip color. You know, they actually do show up. They're so smooth. They're like buttery creamy. And this pink is just a perfect execution of pink. I, I What more can I say? I, I love it in this texture. It's called Mint Rose. That's what that shade is, but I will show you the other shades too. We have one called Chocolate Kiss, and be careful with what you think this is going to be, because it does have kind of a caramely look to it, and it's definitely the most neutral, but I actually feel a lot of red coming through this shade. It's almost like a 
a really deep brownish coral with a little bit of red pushing in there. And I think it's a really interesting shade. It's unique. I'm really glad I have it. I like to give you guys an ultimate favorite when I'm talking about these different families of lip products because I know not everybody's up for getting all of them. So if I had to choose one, I like to boil it down for you in that way. But that Chocolate Kiss is really kind of a unique color. And then you have Berry Red, which to look at this in the stick, it looks like it would be just a red lipstick. But what you end up getting is this gorgeous level of sheerness here. Now you still have to be careful putting this on, even though it's a lighter level of coverage than their other lipsticks. You still have to be kind of careful because it's still got red and that red is going to show, but it's going to be such a fresh red, a lightweight red. It's a summery red. You know how most red lipsticks look very deliberate, very like I am trying to be super glam right now, you know, and I don't mind that one bit, but this is more of that effortless like, oh, I just have these wonderfully be stung lips, you know. In comparison to the Onami or Onami, these Besame's have a little more richness. There's a slight bit more thickness. These are more along the lines of a traditional tinted lip balm, whereas these are closer to a lipstick. But that pink has really just connected with me. And I just think they couldn't have done a more beautiful job with the exterior packaging. I love that. That's going to be a color combination that I try to work together so much more just in my everyday life is pink with a really rich burgundy. Now here is one of the most unique products that I have to talk about today. It's the new stuff from Urban decay called lo-fi lip mousse. So we've got these little pots and when you open them up, guess what? A little applicator pops out here. It looks like a sponge tip, although it has a very dense feel to it. You know, it's not like one of those very porous seeming sponges that you might apply eyeshadow with. It's almost rubbery feeling. Frankly, I don't think it does the product justice when you try to apply it with that. And I don't think a lip brush really works that great for it either. I feel like a fingertip is honestly the best application of this stuff, which is kind of a bummer because look, you end up sort of stained on your fingers a little bit. But it's a really cool product, I must say. To talk about the texture a little bit, it feels like, I don't know, a cream blush or something. You probably could make these double as a cream blush if you wanted to. Although there's still quite a level of dryness in here that might might make them kind of hard to blend across the skin if you were going to try that. So they're creamy yet dry and extremely matte. You know how with most matte liquid lip colors, let's say, you're putting them on, they're in a liquefied state, it takes a little time, and then finally they look matte. These are so instantaneously matte and so um, true to their actual color that you see here. It's really cool, but I do find that when you use your fingertip to apply them, you can kind of control the amount of intensity that you have. Like if you really want to take your time, get some on your finger, and just sort of rub it across your lips, you can create this sort of stained looking lip or you can keep going back for more and more and more and probably build it up to a very opaque look although I kind of like these at the level of looking like a lip stain so I have two favorite shades that I'm gonna really spend time talking about here one is echo and it looks kind of like a soft berry um, there's definitely some mauve in this shade and I love the sort of effortless quality this has when you see it on the lips a lot of the shades in this line are very rich very intense and this is a little bit softer, more wearable, more realistically a color I would reach for and want a lot on my lips. And then the other shade I want to reference here is called Fade. And this one is more rooted in a neutral place. It's kind of caramely. I sense a little bit of red coming through there also. But I think they look so pretty on the lips and they make the lips almost look pillowy. And they're not offering a lot of moisture. So if you're having a real dry lip day, this may not be the product you want to go for. Or you certainly have the option of wearing a balm underneath and that would cause these to sort of spread across the lips perhaps even easier and you most definitely have the option of putting a gloss on top and altering the finish in that way. Think of these as like the purest form of just pigment color. There's nothing messing with the finish of these. They're going to be 100% matte and you have the power of changing that up and you know applying a lip liner or applying a gloss on top or a metallic lip topper on top, whatever you want to do. There are so many pretty shades in the line. Just because I picked those two, it's not that I really dislike any of the others except one. There's only really one that I dislike and it's called Halo and that's the pink that I think is just a little too light to look really good in this format. And this is probably why Urban 
Candy K didn't make a bunch of light shades in this texture of product because it will make your lips look visibly dry. This color will. Anything remotely textured, flaky, it will totally show off with this color. So everything else, as you're going to see, is very vibrant, rich, and sort of on the deep side. So Noise is a beautiful, like, traditional pinky berry. We've got Wavelength, which has a lot of purple in it. I do think that's a gorgeous and kind of unique shade as well. Boom is one of the deepest shades in the line. This actually is going to be so pretty in the fall. Then we've got a couple of tones of red. Frequency is your really bright, kind of warm red. Apply it lightly. You could lay it on thicker. And then Amplify is more of a true red. I almost might call it a bit of a berry red, especially in comparison to that last red. But these, I think, are really fun. They're very different. I really enjoy them. Um, a downside to wearing them on their own is that they just don't offer a lot of moisture to your lips, but the benefits are that they're very long wearing. They have a real, like, just pure look on the lips. Kind of a fan of that natural stained look. But another downside is the application. If you're not a fan of applying with your fingers, I mean, to me, maybe somebody else has another trick out there, but to me, the finger really applies it best. It's not that it's really melting the product down because this isn't really even capable of doing a lot of melting, but it's just the spread across the lips somehow is easier with the finger than it is with that little applicator that's provided. And the last thing I'm going to talk about here in my roundup of new lip products is the new Too Faced Melted Metallic. Yes, matte metallic. They call it metallic, and I don't really like these at all. How can I say this? There's a level of dryness that I'm willing to put up with if the overall look on the lips is still going to be really beautiful, like these. You know, they feel kind of dry, but yet the lips look so good. I can go with that because the finished look is so great. With these, your lips are going to look dry, and because they have that metallic quality to them, they're going to also have a crustiness. There's just going to be this unappealing texture that takes over on the lips. The two that I'm holding here, I do have the whole line. It was sent to me. There are a few really rich shades, like there's a couple of dark, like purpley berries, and then there's a lot that I think really on the light side. And the lighter the shade, I think almost the more problematic that appearance of dryness is on the lips. And I've used plenty of the Too Faced Melted Matte, just their regular non-metallic versions, and they're not too bad as far as a liquid lipstick goes. I mean, they're drying, but they're not terrible. These, that metallic twist that's in these, just sends them over the edge for making your lips look dry and you won't notice it right as soon as you put them on but you give them just a little time and by the time it's reached its dry down point the metallic is really showing and the two that I'm going to show you today are the two that probably worked the best on me because they're most toward the middle being a mid-tone the light ones as I said exaggerate texture in your lips even more the darkest ones you have to be very careful with that application like really keep your lines and edges super duper straight but breakup makeup is is this kind of medium warm pink and from a distance even it can look totally fine but even getting so close as to be like for me to the camera normal talking distance away from someone I don't think that looks super attractive I just don't know why we need to do that to our lips and then the red in this line while the tone of it is best suited to not making that um, metallic look so unattractive on the lips I still don't like the feel of these I mean they're the most uncomfortable lip product by far from what I've talked about the thing about the Urban Decay low while these are matte, they feel like nothing on the lips. You know, they feel super lightweight. It's just kind of like your own natural texture of your lips. These feel like a separate extra drying layer. So sorry, I'm not going to try on all of them for you. I'm sure there are other people here on YouTube who have done a full try on of them all, but I just can't get behind that texture. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. I know I've got my core of people who just really like talking lip products, so I hope this fed your soul for lip product chit chat today. I definitely have had a good time. So thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.